Isaiah 9, 6. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. This is the ultimate miracle child that will be born. God would again intervene with a special miracle and bring about the birth of his own son into the human family to be all these things for us, Savior. Now, this verse confuses some people. I just want to mention this while we're here. This verse is speaking about Christ's work as Savior when he would come as a man. And these titles have uh, thrown some people off as far as the issue of the Trinity, particularly, uh, because Jesus is here called the Mighty God and the Everlasting Father. You heard about this verse in that context? I want to tell you right off, this verse has absolutely nothing to do with any Trinity. This is purely a messianic prophecy because these titles are actually prophetic that Christ will be called by these titles in the future. Correct? It's not things that he had in the past. He says his name when he's born and he will accomplish salvation and his name will be called. As a result of his accomplishments as savior, he will earn these names, these titles. Why is he referred to as the everlasting father? Thank you. The reason is very simple is because he comes as the second Adam. And as the second Adam, he will have the ability to impart life and have children, not physical children, spiritual children. So he becomes the father of those that are born of him, as we shall see. So we saw the physical miracle of birth for all these seven children, signifying Christ, who also himself will be able to have spiritual children. So he will be their everlasting father. And as far as him being called the mighty God, just so no one thinks I kind of skipped that and didn't want to talk about it. Uh, this is in reference to the fact that even though he comes as a man, he still remains and retains his divine nature as the son of God. His divine nature is what qualifies him to be called God by the title God or by, uh, you know, by that word. And God is used many times in the scripture in ways to signify the God of the Bible, but also in ways to signify the nature that someone has. Jesus is in the category of the God being. In other words, he has the God nature. It doesn't mean that he is God the Father or that he is uh, interchangeable with God the Father, but it does mean that he has the nature of his Father, which is the God nature. So he's referred to as God in reference to his nature. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Why is he a new creature? Because there is new life. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. The focus in this verse is quite simply, it's about being and not about doing. How you are in Christ. The focus is on if you are in Christ. That's a state of being. That state of being cannot come about except for a miracle from God. You realize that? There is no human ability that can bring about this state of being. God has to intervene by a miracle, just like he did in all these other instances, to accomplish this reality. And if you are in Christ, you are this new creature. God is concerned about your state of being, first and foremost, not just about your actions, not just about what you can or can't do, because it's more can't than can. And God knows that very well. That's why God does what we cannot do for ourselves. He provides this miracle. The reason why we need this life, quite simply, is as, as I said earlier, the life that God gave to humanity in Adam was lost. It became sin infected and it was, since that time, a dying life. Every child that comes into this world inherits the dying life of Adam. We just drop dead. You leave us long enough or short enough predictable in every case you'll drop dead why the life that you have just does not last it's infected with death that's a predict that's a statement that you can predict as far as all the children are not even born yet we all know everybody's going to die why because adam's life that god gave him became infected with death and so what we need the most in order to overcome this problem of death is we need life a new source of life and that source of life does not come by us getting together and trying to solve our problem. It is not of human origin. It has to be a supernatural bestowal of life. That's what's told in all these stories. Seven times God did it. 
the eighth time he did it with his son, which is the real thing, to teach us a lesson. You think God was trying to tell us something in all of that? Most certainly. Can we see the pieces? Can we fit the puzzle together? So you do get something in the new birth. It's not just a cliche. It's not just language that the Bible uses. And as, we, as I said, we'll be exploring that a little bit more as we go along. This new life that God gives us comes directly from Him. Why is He referred to as the everlasting Father? Because He comes as the second Adam. And as the second Adam, He will have the ability to impart life and have children, not physical children, spiritual children. So he becomes the father of those that are born of him.